I'm going to unbox this. Um, I'm really old, but I've heard that people like to watch other people take things out of a box. <clears throat> it's really early in the morning, which is why I sound so sultry and alluring. Um, I'm going to drink some coffee and hope that uh, my voice raises at half an octave. Though I've got to say, oh, see, wow, the miracle of caffeine. Um, my delightful husband got me this for my birthday, uh, which was last week, uh, hence the, you know, feeling old thing. And also it's early in the morning. Um, it's by Cozy Blue. Cozy Blue is uh, local to Asheville. Asheville, which is, um, you know, the, the corner of the world where we are filming from right now. I really like her kits. They are so nice. They are often dark colours, which I like, and um, they're often quite witchy, which obviously I'm going to like. Uh, the packaging I'm envious of, I, I don't know where she gets it all done, but I love this packaging. I love also her branding's really simple. So when I started doing all my business, she was a real inspiration to me. Um, and so, hey Cozy Blue, love you. I don't actually love you. You could be a terrible person. I've no idea. I've never met you. But I've heard that you that you had a blog that was quite cool. So anyway, on to the unboxing. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because if you're starting out doing embroidery, you probably uh, need to know what to expect when you have a kit. Um, the only thing you should really have to worry about when you buy a kit is getting a pair of scissors that you use to cut thread. Um, so here's what you should get in a really good embroidery kit. Embroidery hoop, this one's pretty large. I think it's probably about six inches. So it, that tells me that the um, design's gonna be quite big. It's a little foxy fox, and I'm probably gonna make this and put it in my daughter's bedroom. She's got a gallery wall of all the things that I make. So anyway, yep, yeah, embroidery hoop. That's the first thing you should get in your kit. Let's see what else we've got here. And I've done lots of her, so I kind of know that I kind of know what she's gonna have in here. Uh, embroidery thread. These are all the different colours. Oh, this is interesting. So let me open this because I'm surprised by by this and, and impressed. Often when you get sorry, that's noisy, isn't it? Is that like one of those, um, you know, those things where people cut pieces of sew? Is that soothing or is that just upsetting? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to stop. These are a full skein, a skein of embroidery silk or floss. Normally when I've had kits, they come in, a, they come with like an, an amount of, of, of embroidery silk or threads, but not the full skein. They're often on like a little card or something. So I'm kind of surprised that she's got the full skein. And I think it's really great because it ensures you've got enough silk. There's nothing more annoying than doing a project. And I have actually had this happen and you don't have enough um, of the materials. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a shame. Anyway, I'm going to open this because it, and it's noisy. So I'm just going to open that. Yeah, that's how I open things aggressively. Anyway. So yeah, full skeins of all the different colours. She's using DMC, which is a which is a good choice. I approve. There aren't many good. I'm going to say there aren't many good easily found uh, embroidery silks. DMC kind of leads the way. And what's a good embroidery silk? They're nice and smooth. They don't knot or snag easily, and uh, the colours are nice and bright. So all of those, and then <coughs> excuse me. It is the design on printed onto the fabric. Ta -da. She prints in color. I've had some embroidery kits where they print um, just in in on white, black on white, or vice versa. I don't have a problem with that. I think that's that's okay. But it's really helpful if it is in color 
because you kind of already know what colours from here you're going to need. So you don't have to keep checking a chart or anything to go, well, what colours it's supposed to be. So that's great. And she always prints on um, uh, in colour. You've got a nice little... Um, I really like how she does these little postcards of the design. Whoops, I've got something else. With all the directions. Um, and they're, they're very straightforward and simple directions. What she also has is these extra little cards as well that are really cute. And I keep them as bookmarks. Um, that show, this one's just like an intro into who Cozy Blue is or the ethos behind the embroidery process. And then uh, this is a bit more detailed kind of if you've never done sewing before, if you've never done an embroidery before, this is how you, these are the steps. So that's helpful. Then she always gives uh, this bigger handout that's got all of the stitches that you're gonna use. So we've got, let's see, straight stitch, seed stitch back um seed stitch yeah uh back stitch uh chain stitch and satin stitch colonial knot i think colonial knot is also called the figure eight knot which is uh i think that's what they call it in britain anyway so there you've got your stitches most embroidery kits should have these as well they're easy to find online but i would much prefer to have it all together so i love that she provides those and most the embroidery kits will do that and then of course you can't do any of this without a needle so she provides a needle um and hers come in these little individual packages so uh yeah cozy blue her stuff is awesome she has lots of different designs if you go on her website as well you can um join she's got like a stitching club and things like that so i definitely recommend checking her out i'll put her deets in the description so and i'm gonna get started oh wow as soon as i turn the video on i burp isn't that lovely oh i've dropped something still really early in the morning so uh voice sounds like this sorry and here we have uh one of the wreaths i am working on for the holiday market in asheville at asheville community yoga this saturday 10 to 3, come along. Uh, I'm using only two stitches. This one's a bit of an experiment, actually. I've been doing a bunch of the wreaths, and if you've been watching my feed, you will have seen I've done them in um, all in the same linen. And this one is not. It's a, obviously, it's like polka dots, but I love this fabric so much. It's so, uh, it's kind of retro. It's really graphic and punchy. I will not use the phrase pop of colour. I'm just not going to do it. I hate that phrase. Um, HGTV mag uses it a lot. They need to come up with different phrases. Striking is a phrase or a word. Anyway, that's the English snobby English teacher in me coming out. I'm using fishbone stitch for these bigger leaves. Fishbone stitch, I kind of think it's funny it's called fishbone stitch. I do understand why it does look like a fishbone, but it also really looks like a leaf. And how often are you embroidering fishbones? Like, it's, I mean, was there a period in time where people were just frantically embroidering the carcass of a fish? Maybe, I don't know. I just think it makes more sense to call it something like leaf stitch. You're more likely to use it for a leaf. But anyway, I do love that it's, I'm, I'm going to say, I also love that it's called fishbone sticks. I think it's stitch. I think it's hilarious. Then the other stitch I'm using is fern stitch, which in itself doesn't look like a fern. But when you put it all together with other branches, if you kind of build it all up, that's how you get the fern effect. I'm using it to make little kind of evergreen branches here. So it's going to go all the way around. And then I'm probably just not going to, I might add some sparkly bits because it's, uh, a yuletide slash Christmas thing but yeah that's what I'm working on right now and uh yeah bye